Hi there, good morning. This is Plovdiv, the second largest city of Bulgaria. A nice sunny warm day. Today is July 14th. It is 81 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 27 degrees Celsius. So nice and warm, not crazy hot. Over there, just a block is the like main tourist area, the pedestrian walking street, central square, a lot to see. I will be showing that later. For now, I have a mission, which is to pick up my laundry, which I dropped off yesterday. I was trying to remember the last time that I had laundry properly done, and I literally cannot remember when. It has been well more than six weeks or longer I have gotten by just by basically washing the you know underwear and socks not that I've gone through many socks in the course of uh, the uh, past number of weeks of being in Greece you know where it's hot but uh, I've just washed some of the essentials shirts etc on my own either in my room like in the shower, if you're taking a shower, you have a oh, road rage in action. This guy stopped at a uh, not ultimate place to stop your car in the middle of a lane. Anyways, so uh, if you're taking a shower, you have soap dripping down anyways. Throw your uh, clothes in there, wash them up. And then also I did some washing in the sea in Greece. So anyways, it is going to be like a uh, kilometer walk over to the uh, place where I dropped it off yesterday. They do the laundry, wash, fold, everything. I have no idea how much it's going to cost yet, so we will find out. And so today is just going to be a kind of random exploring day of Plovdiv. Give you a taste for the city, show you some of the sights, not necessarily a full tour of everything, but it is a very interesting city. Very uh, picturesque, nice architecture, a great size. Despite being the second largest city of Bulgaria, it really isn't all that big. Just a, like, pleasant, medium-sized sort of a city with quite a bit to see. Good choice of restaurants, cafes, ancient Roman ruins, and lots more. So, I will get over to the uh, laundry place tell you how much it cost and then uh, keep on wandering around this uh, lovely city of Bulgaria. Meditation.bg looks like it might be a uh, Hindu spiritual, you know, satsang, something like that. They have the organ, guitar, some sort of a uh, like yoga meditation group, I guess. Bulgaria is majority Eastern Orthodox Christian. Not sure who that guy is, but uh, looks like probably a religious figure holding a cross. Nice little park here. A church. I actually had lunch here yesterday. Italian restaurant had some pasta on my way walking back from dropping off the laundry. Another nice park here. And I just stopped and bought a big thing of 100% orange juice. Really good when I got it yesterday. This was 460 Bulgarian Lev or Leva. 
and basically you just cut it in half. So 10 leva is five US dollars and 12 cents. So in other words, basically almost exactly half. So 460 Bulgarian lev is two dollars 30 cents. All right, so I have my laundry here and what is your name? Teodora. Teodora. Yes. And you work here at uh, White Laundry? Yes, White Point. Or White Point, yes. And uh, how long have you worked here? Three years. Three years, okay. Yes. Have you been to university? No, no. Not yet? This year I'm going to graduate. From I... like high school? Yes. I see. So what are you going to study in uh, university? Maybe law or or something uh, connected to law? history. Law, I see. Yes. Oh, or history, like Bulgarian history? Something connected with uh, history, law or journalistic. Journalist, okay. Journalist. Yep. Yeah, uh, or uh, maybe a Bulgarian uh, philology. Is this the correct pronunciation? Philology? Yes. Like philosophy? No? You might be right, this is a word, and I'm not, I'm not sure about this one, but... Philology connected with languages. Ah, okay, I see, yeah. Because yesterday you were telling me all the languages you speak. So, Bulgarian, obviously, and then uh, Russian. Yes. How different is Russian from Bulgarian? Mm, a little bit, but for me, it's um, so easy. Yeah. And, and uh, I'm going to uh, prepare for uh, C1 on um, Russian, okay. for a uh, Russian certificate. It's, I see, uh, like it, for the language to be certified Russian yes, speaker. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, it's called uh, Pushkin. Okay. From Alexander Sergeyevich Pushkin. I see. Who is he? He's a uh, Russian author. Oh, okay, an author. I see, okay. And so you also speak uh, French, English? And Russian. Yeah, so four languages. Yes. Pretty good. Congratulations. That's, Thank you so that's much. That's amazing. So, uh, yeah, this is the place uh, right here, so White Point Laundry. And you're just telling me the word for the coins. Can you say again? Stuchinki. Stuchinki. So it cost uh, 16 leva and 20 stuchinki. Stuchinki. Yes. New word for me. So thank you so much. I appreciate it. So this is the center of the tourist scene. Very nice uh, pedestrian area, restaurants. The old town is down this way. And this is my hotel right here. The Stay Hotel. And you can see there is a happy bar and grill right next to it, down here. I showed that restaurant in my video of Sofia. Reliable place to get some decent food at a good price. And a quick room tour, $55 or 55 euros per night. Here is the internet speeds, pretty good. Very small but functional with TV, nice uh, comfy double bed, fridge, safe, little desk, clean, quiet, and a great location. The one problem really is the bathroom is so compact you have the situation with the shower going right onto the floor, which you then have to mop up. But uh, otherwise, a good place to stay in Plovdiv. Now, time to go get some lunch. I think that I'm going to go to Happy, since it is close, easy, pretty quick, and then keep on exploring from there. And so I'm here at Happy. They have these nice drinks, good for a summer's afternoon. They're uh, non-alcoholic. I got the elderflower. And then there's raspberry, mango, lemon squash. And then they also have cocktails, all kinds of stuff. Good desserts. And order some food. Got some zucchini fritters with a nice sauce. And chicken with mushrooms and mashed potatoes. 
Pedestal for the statue of Titus Flavius Priscianus. To good fortune, the metropolis set up the statue of Titus Flavius Priscianus, a Thracearch, president of the Thracian Common Council, like his predecessors, priest of the imperial cult and first archon of the city. May it be fortunate. Date, AD 222 to 235. And so I assume that that is a translation of this right here. Now, I am not 100% certain that is just straight Greek. People can let me know. There are certainly Greek symbols over there. And then others that are obviously the same as the Latin, but of course in the Greek alphabet then some of the symbols are the same as Latin. And so this is referencing Thracian so, I don't know if that is like some slightly different uh, language, the Thracian language or something that is similar to Greek. The Thracians lived in this region of northeastern Greece, southeastern Bulgaria, and northwestern Turkey. And the Thracians were kind of considered to be like a bit of a like barbaric, unorganized culture relative to the Greeks and the Romans, but maybe this is a later version of them, AD 222, because the Thracians went back uh, much uh, earlier than that, into BC. So, point being that it is complicated history and there are many layers of history here in this uh, region. So, these ancient ruins are the remnants of the city of Philippopolis. So Philippopolis, which the uh, current city of Plovdiv is on top of, you will see many more ruins in the course of exploring the city. Philippopolis was named after King Philip II of Macedon. King Philip II of Macedon was the father of Alexander the Great. I've been to the ancient ruins of Pella, where Alexander the Great was born in northern Greece, present-day Greece. Alexander the Great, a Macedonian Greek king, warrior, conqueror, undefeated in battle, more famous now than his father, but his father was a important uh, king as well, and this city here was named after him. And so, of course, that uh, harkens back to the Greek heritage of this uh, city and this region. Of course, it is not so simple as the Greeks, the Thracians, the Romans. It is just more complicated than that. There were distinctions among Greek tribes and uh, there were differences between the Macedonians and the Greeks in Athens and southern Greece, but it was essentially a Greek civilization. Here we have more of the language. But that was just one phase of it, because there was also the Roman occupation and phase of history of Philippopolis and this entire region. Double honorary inscription for Marcus Aurelius and Heraeus to Marcus Aurelius from Philippopolis, the most remarkable of the most brilliant metropolis of the province of Thrace. Heraeus, daughter of Apollodorus, the wife, honored his husband. To Heraeus, daughter of Apollodorus, Marcus Aurelius honored his wife, date AD 222 to 235. So Greek, Roman, Macedonian, Thracian, many phases of history, and various cultures and civilizations coming together. So, you can see, it is just right here, right next to the main tourist area, and there is much more. Again, the language, and this looks different. I mean, it does have the same 
symbols, but the style is a little bit different from the other ones. It is a little smaller. And so here it says, date second half of the second or beginning of the third century AD. And so that is a little bit earlier than the other ones was 222 to 235. And so this might have been the second half of the second century, in other words, 150 to 200. Imperial letter. Your ambassadors to me were Philippus and Cecilius Cerealis. Let the travel allowance be paid to them, unless they have promised to make the embassy at their own expense farewell. So very interesting ancient site here, and let's go see more of it. The ruins that I was just showing down there, more restaurants, a really nice park here, a large park, more ruins, and a big square. And then we have here something from a very different era of Bulgarian history. I don't know when that was actually created, but it seems apparent that it is from the communist era. Bulgaria was ruled by a communist party from 1946 to 1990. Very communist era style there. So no date on this plaque, at least not that I can read, but it must be a war memorial. Old town, 30 meters. I think that that is what you're about to see. Old town, ancient theater. A church here, the Bulgarian flag, and another church here, very different style. Looks almost Byzantine era, maybe not that old, but uh, kind of similar style. Here we have the St. Demetrius Orthodox Church. So the late antiquity residential building, which is obviously something else, after the fourth century AD, here, St. Demetar Church, 1838. Antiquity basically refers to up until around the end of the Roman Empire. So this is a 19th century church, but there was some reference to residential building. I don't see something that is clearly that old unless... What is this? Wow. Holy Spring of the Martyrs, Saint Syracus and Saint Julita. And a very nice mosaic. 
quite old style. This seems very Byzantine to me. Clearly Christian. Getting closer to the ancient theater, 50 meters. So I thought that I would mention a little bit about the language of Bulgaria. It is, of course, a Slavic language written in Cyrillic, the same script that Russian is written in. However, it was actually developed here in Bulgaria by the Bulgarian Empire in the 9th century AD. The uh, language is very similar to Russian, but there are differences as well. I have learned very little, so hello is a tricky one. It is zdravete. Zdravete is hello, or easier to say is good day, which is dobroden, or dobroden. Thank you is blagadaria. Yes is da, no is ne which is interesting because that is the exact opposite of Greek in which nay is yes. All right, here we go. I need to buy a ticket. And here we go. The ancient theater of Plovdiv. Constructed long before Plovdiv was Plovdiv. It was created in the first century AD by the Romans likely under the Roman Emperor Domitian. It can seat five to seven thousand spectators and is still in use. Looks like they're getting ready or taking down from a show. Great perspective of the ancient and the modern the edge of the city, the hills. You can see that although it is a city, the second largest city in Bulgaria, it is not a, you know, sprawling, expansive city. You can see the end of it right there. And this is basically right in the middle. And so it is like, you know, about that same distance to the edge of the city in every direction. I went up to that hill last night, not the first one, but the second one... Which has a statue on top. You can't quite see the statue, but uh, anyways, there's a nice hill over there to hike up. And it was five lev. $2.50 for the ticket. Carrying a cross there. So this is Tsar Ivailo Street. Tsar Ivailov was a Bulgarian ruler from 1277 until 1279 and was the leader of a peasant uprising. In 1277, he and his men expelled the Tatars and defeated the troops of Tsar Konstantin Asen, after which he entered Tarnovo, not sure if that means Veliko Tarnovo, a town that I visited my last time in Bulgaria, and was proclaimed Tsar King, but he faced the resistance of the Boyars and was killed in 1279. So. A very short street for a very short reign, I guess, of two years. And then here is Todor something Dumov Street. So these streets seem to be named after various historical figures. So I'm going to continue walking through the old town here and look for 
one of the classic traditional homes which you can go inside well here is another one Cleanti house one of the oldest wooden frame residential buildings from the Bulgarian revival period in the ancient Plovdiv architectural and historic reserve dating from the middle of the 18th century and so 1750 ish okay Lifestyles of the rich and famous of 18th century Bulgaria. Interesting, so what was this short little room for? Maybe like for storing goods. So you have the Balabanov House, Ethnographic Museum, there is the Boris Palace Hotel and Restaurant. This is all within the Old Town. Continuing that way, let's uh, just do a quick walkthrough. There are lots more of the old uh, traditional homes to visit if you want, but I think uh, one is fine for now. Here you have a hiker's hostel. So that is one option is to stay somewhere right in the old town. However, it is more happening where I am. So it just depends on what you want. Peace and quiet or a little more action. Exposition Zlatiu Boyadziev. So a museum basically there it looks like. Looks like traditional quality crafts may be used. So I'll go a little bit further to the old town and then wrap around and show some more of the Roman ruins, including one of the most spectacular things in Plovdiv, which is only partially visible, the Roman, I guess it would be, it's like a racetrack. You'll see what I mean. Okay, we have some very nice paintings here. I think this looks worth uh, showing. The Complex of the Saints Constantine and Helena Church. Several church buildings with different purposes. Okay, not sure if you have to pay here. Let's find out, but... Uh... No, we're done. Hello, no, we're done. Okay. I guess I can't film inside, but maybe right here. Oh, wow. Very nice.
The old town is quite incredible. Interesting that it is just so deserted. Probably it is more happening at times in the evenings. People uh, come to the restaurants probably and maybe there's some music going on or other activities so you can see lots more to see. Street of Crafts, okay. 20 meters. Let's go see if there are crafts at the Street of Crafts, right uh, through the arch, I guess. Okay, well, not at the moment, but in the past, Street of Crafts is Crafts Market where one can explore typical for the revival period workshops. Have a tea or coffee, purchase herbs in the creative workshops, workshops in ceramics, pottery, bakery, felting, glass engraving, painting, weaving, blacksmithery. So the traditional Street of Crafts and I guess perhaps presently as well at the right time, it sounds like. Okay, where is the actual area of shops? I guess, uh... These here. Okay, here we go. The Street of Crafts welcomes you. Very interesting. Here is an art gallery. So this is one of the craft workshops. Art textiles, it says. Continuing down here. Okay, I'm going to uh, get to the other side of the hill and back down towards the pedestrian walking area. More ancient columns here. And again, writing that I'm not entirely certain if it is just plain Greek or some variation. There are Greek symbols. And so I probably should have mentioned it earlier that Plovdiv is one of the oldest cities in Europe, possibly the oldest city in Europe. The area has been inhabited for 8,000 years. So 6,000 BC. That is a long time ago. So there's a sign for the Hinlian house. That is the one that I was originally looking for. I think that I will skip it now that I saw the other one. But there are lots of these traditional style houses that you can go inside. The Hadzi Vlasaki Chohadzi Yata house, end of the 18th century. And so I believe that the Roman stadium is what I was referring to as the racetrack. You'll see what I mean. A really nice area here of restaurants. Thank you. 
Some pretty nice street art around here. Otherwise ugly back alley, except for this amazing artwork. And here we have more of the ruins of Philippopolis. And that is really interesting. Let's go take a closer look. Marble statue pedestal dating to 267 to 268. Again, that is probably AD. In whatever that language is. Good luck. The most glittering metropolis of Thrace, Philippopolis. So that tells you a lot right there that it's not referred to as Rome or Grecia or Byzantium, but Thrace. Raised a statue to its benefactor and savior, the remarkable governor Marcion, protector of our invincible master Gallinus Augustus, Praetorian tribune, captain, and troop commander, during the rule of the first archon Pyrrhos, former first archpriest and quaestor of the city. Really incredible to be able to actually read the words written 2,000 years ago announcing their feelings of glory for the city. So here you can see the other amphitheater and it looks smaller than the one that I showed previously, however, it is actually much larger. So here is why. That is just the end of it. So you can see it's like a racetrack. You can imagine Olympic type games being held here. So this is a recreation of it. And I guess what you're seeing right there is basically just this little you know, portion of it. What an absolutely just spectacular sight that must have been to see, you know, the crowds going wild, the races, the competitions. I wonder if the king would have been seated there Remnants of a very different past. And look at this. A sundial. How cool is that? Hard to tell what uh, era. And obviously it is being blocked by this tree. I wonder if the tree wasn't there, if it would still be working properly. Maybe not just because of the passage of time. Here you can see much more to see in the city. 
Natural History Museum, Exposition, The Unification of Bulgaria, Archaeological Museum, Tsar Simeon Garden, Museum Center of Modern History, Ancient Forum, and Odeon. So there's a lot packed into this small city here. And so tomorrow, going next to the Black Sea, the beaches of Bulgaria, the Riviera. I will be taking a train or a bus tomorrow. So take it easy, more coming from Bulgaria. MCML XXX, 1980.